you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of all future uploads. And check the description box below the video for important links and information. How you doing guys? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com and I'm making this video to celebrate or commemorate, whatever you want to call it, June 4th, which is Killdozer Day. And I made these awesome shirts, Let Freedom Roll. I've got another one that says Get Mad and Get Even, Death Before Dishonor. Link will be in the description. This story of the Killdozer Rampage has always fascinated me because, well, there's a lot of interesting elements to it. But a couple of the most interesting aspects of it to me are the fact that he didn't kill anyone, and it appears that that was purposeful, other than himself, and it was a result of not just a sudden outburst or rampage, but over a year and a half of labor and planning dedicated to this uh, crazed rampage that he went on. And it's kind of interesting to me because that shows what how basically hard you can be to stop, regardless of what your plan is, when a at least reasonably intelligent, reasonably sane person dedicates that much time and effort to take, you know, whatever that goal might be. So the story begins in Granby, Colorado, where Marvin Hemeyer was a welder and a muffler shop owner. And he became embroiled in a different kinds of zoning disputes and fines with the local city government in regards to building in a property right next to his, where he had his shop. And obviously there's a little bit of contention about what exactly he was upset about and who is at fault. But the main contention that he had was with the city itself and one particular business that was trying to get zoned or did successfully get zoned to go in next to his muffler shop. And in some various ways, uh, disrupt his business, at least in his mind. So he sent about, at some point during this ongoing dispute, he took a uh, Komatsu bulldozer and in his shop began welding on armor plating and layer of, of steel with concrete in between and then another layer of steel, at some points up to a foot thick, which made it basically impervious to small arms fire and worked pretty successfully because during the encounter, he was shot at hundreds of times by the police department and obviously had no effect. And his, his planning also went so far as to include video cameras mounted at various places on the killdozer and even included a compressed air nozzles to blow dust away from the video cameras, knowing that debris and stuff would pile up on there and shield the video cameras with some sort of uh, bulletproof or bullet resistant Lexan or, or uh, bulletproof glass. And... So even when the police specifically tried to target some of the video cameras, they were unsuccessful in being able to take them out because of these precautions that he's had. I'll include some links in the uh, description box below this video to some actual, more actual footage, but I don't want to get my video copyright claimed because most of the, that footage is owned by news sources. But after, almost a year and a half after he started building the, uh, the Killdozer, he unleashed it onto the city of Granby in June 4th, 2004. He sealed himself inside the cockpit and even had ports for weapons. And some of the authorities said after the fact, not, not sure if this is 100% true, but that he would have been unable to get out so that he knew going in that this was a one-way trip. So he plowed out of his shop through the wall and decided to start attacking various buildings that were in various ways involved in the dispute that he had with the city. He went through the concrete plant that was involved in trying to get zoned there, a town hall, a newspaper office that had written about the case in some capacity, a former judge's house, a hardware store, and a couple other homes related to people who were somewhat involved in, from the city, I believe. And apparently every yeah business or home that had been destroyed had some connection to this thing. It wasn't at all random, and that's one of the most interesting parts about this story is the level of preparation and the level of focus, regardless of how misguided you may think it is, but just how interesting it is because it's so unique for someone to decide to do something so significant and so, you know, um, wild, but still do it with such focus and uh, planning. And one of the more interesting things to come out of this case was a quote by Hermeyer in a note that he'd left behind saying, I was always willing to be reasonable until I had to be unreasonable. And sometimes reasonable men must do unreasonable things. So he at least saw himself as a reasonable person. And this goes to show you just what can crazy things that can be done by someone who spends time and focus to accomplish their goal instead of just lashing out 
emotionally. So for two hours and seven minutes, he went on this killdozer rampage, in total damaging over 13 buildings and causing something like seven million dollars in damages. It was it was so unstoppable. At one point, the uh, governor considered using the National Guard to attack it with anti-tank missiles or even Apache helicopters, and uh, that was ultimately deemed too dangerous or too high a risk of collateral damage. And eventually, the rampage stopped when the killdozer got stuck on some sort of a concrete wall or concrete part of a concrete building and the radiator had been damaged as well and the weight of the armor was just too much for it and basically burned out on him and then at that point when they the, when the authorities tried to get inside he killed himself all in all not a single person besides Hermione himself was killed the killdozer itself was scrapped and purposely sent to multiple different scrapper junkyards to make it difficult if not impossible for people to collect pieces of it as uh, trophies or to sell it. So for a variety of reasons, this is a very unique and interesting story to me, and I don't necessarily think it's an example that should be emulated, with the possible exception of how much dedication and focus was spent on accomplishing this goal. And that's why it's always interesting to me when these type of other types of, you know, more typical rampages occur, because it always, I always think about how lucky we are that these people just did it kind of on a whim and didn't spend years or even months planning it. And the few exceptions that occur out there, like the Killdozer Rampage, show you just how hard a, a uh, individual can be to stop when they're reasonably intelligent, reasonably skilled, and actually are acting on some kind of logical plan and not just an emotional outburst. So regardless of what you think about his motives and his methods for accomplishing his goals, you have to at least admire the effort and focus that he put into accomplishing them and the fact that he purposely avoided uh, causing any casualties. It's a really interesting story, and today is the actual anniversary of the Killdozer Rampage. I'm not sure who exactly is responsible for spawning the Killdozer moniker, but it is uh, pretty apt, and it's pretty impressive the uh, how unstoppable he was able to make a normal bulldozer by art adding some armor plating and uh, some little modifications. So we got some artist rendering of the Killdozer on here, a couple different slogans, and I've always, like I said, I've always been interested in the story, so I decided to commemorate it with some cool t-shirts, which I've made for myself and also made available for you guys and anyone else who's interested in picking one up. Link will be in the description. Let me know what you guys think about the Killdozer Rampage and about the uh, what he did to the city of Granby, Colorado. If you think it's madness, if you think it was justified, and uh, yeah, it's a very interesting story, and I, I would definitely uh, encourage you guys to go look up some of the actual, more of the actual footage, because like I said, I don't want to put too much of that in this video, because I will get copyright strikes and stuff, as most of it comes from other news channels. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. And don't forget you can support yourself and this channel by checking out rulethewastelandstore.com, where we have an ever-increasing amount of survival and preparedness gear, including one of the best survival fishing kits on the market.